Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship this morning. So glad to see you. Special welcome to all that are joining us online. If you need a bulletin for this service, please go to trinityvoiceville.com for that bulletin. A couple of quick announcements for you today. Uh, first, the next two Wednesdays, uh, worship will be online only. So just access the church Facebook page uh, for that um, online worship the next two Wednesdays. Also, a uh, reminder that coming up on July 11th, we move to um, Inside Service for 9 a.m. So please join us for that at 9 a.m. Inside, Mass Optional, starting on the 11th. We are also looking for fellowship service. And for today, we have no one signed up for fellowship. So there will be no fellowship after service today um, because no one signed up to serve it. And so uh, please check out either the online sign up or the sign up inside for future dates. There will be fellowship next week as there is someone signed up for next week, um, but there will be no fellowship today. Um, I'm going to leave the rest of the announcements to you, and I'm not going to give the microphone to Katie. You have your own microphone. No, bad Katie. Oh, fine. All right, honk if I should give the microphone to Katie. You bribed them all. Um, I want to bring to your attention that today is a very special day or tomorrow is a very special day, um, but we're celebrating today. It is PB's birthday tomorrow. Um, so I want to sing happy birthday, and then we'll have a very loud birthday honk at the end of it. So you can sing in your cars, wave your hands out your windows as you sing, um, but I'll lead us in song. So, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, PB. Happy birthday to you. Birthday honk! I want you all to know, too, at the first service, um, he told me that he would threaten to fire me if I did this, but I did it anyway. So, take that. You're fired. Thank you. Appreciate that. And by the way, I did, I did forget to say Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers, so we thank you for that. And thank you for the birthday song. Now, since you have all now sinned, let us confess that sin with our confession and forgiveness. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We, we confess, confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. We sing our first hymn, How Sweet the Name of Jesus Sounds. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
and also with you. Let us pray together. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes from the 38th chapter of Job, beginning with the first verse. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determines its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? And what were its bases sunk? And who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together? And all the heavenly beings shouted for joy. Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus you shall come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. This is the word of the Lord. Our gospel comes from the fourth chapter of Mark, beginning with the 35th verse. On that day when evening had come, Jesus said to them, Let's go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. So when I was in high school, I played uh, football. And as a freshman, sometimes what they would do is they would pick a couple of freshman players to go up and practice with the varsity to fill out the scout team. Now, before you think this was some sort of honor, it was not. Okay, I was not chosen because I was any good, but I thought that I might be okay. And so I got up there and uh, they wanted us to, to play defense, scout defense against the uh, number one varsity offense, and they put me at linebacker in my head. You know what I thought it was going to be like? I thought it was going to be like Mike Singletary from the 85 Chicago Bears. I'm going to tackle them. I'm going I'm to show them what I'm made of as a 160-pound freshman. Well, very first play, the right guard hit me so hard, I have never been hit that hard in my entire life. The rest of the next uh, the next, the rest of those years I played football, never been hit any harder. Hit me so hard, he lifted me in the air, carried me about two yards down the field, and slammed me to the ground, in which my breath went out of me, and I realized one important, very true fact in that moment. I did not belong there. He was here, and I was way down here. It was, it was just that he was way more powerful, stronger, quicker, faster, way everything more than I could even imagine. And I think about that story when I hear these words in Job. Here God basically smacks down Job. He tells Job, who are you? Were you here when I laid the foundations of the earth? Were you here when I measured its depths and its heights? When I did all these things, who are you? And I love the, I love the, the, the verse, gird your loins up like a man. I will declare to you and you will answer me. Basically what Job is doing is saying, basically what God is doing to Job is saying, I'm God and you're not. I'm God and you're not. Even the disciples get a hint of this in our gospel reading. After Jesus stills the storm, when they look around and like, oh, we, this guy's just not a prophet. He's just not a teacher. 
He commands nature and it listens to him. You know, that, that, that puts you in a, in, a, in a place. That puts you, realizes again of that you're in, a, in company of something bigger than yourself. I think there's two lessons here, or a couple of lessons here. First, just, just on a, as an aside, you notice that in this story, Jesus naps. Which reminds me that napping is good. If Jesus naps, you can nap too, and I can nap. So if you take a good afternoon nap later today, don't feel guilty at all. I know there might be yard work that has to be done and housework that has to be done, but if Jesus takes some time to nap, you can take time to nap. And that's the excuse I'm going to use for the rest of my life. But the real point here is first, the first is, is that God is God and we are not. Sometimes we make ourselves to be like God. Sometimes we think the world and the universe and everything revolves around our whims and desires and things. And we make it all about ourselves. But here God reminds us that, that in, the, in, the, uh, in the end, God is here and, and we, we are not. We are not God. That sometimes we need to be reminded of our place in this universe. That God is God and we are not. After all, our favorite commandment to break is you shall have no other gods because we often make ourselves the God. But the second is this. Though God is God and we are not and though God is so much bigger and greater than us and because of that we may just feel like we're this little tiny speck in all the universe, God cares about you. God cares about you. Hear that the words that the disciples said to Jesus when Jesus was napping. Do you care if we perish? The answer is yes. Because Jesus woke up, stilled the storm, and made everything okay. God cares, and we know that God cares about us, because otherwise God would not have sent Jesus to save us from our sins. God would not have sent Jesus to die on the cross so that we may have eternal life. God even cares about Job. After God puts Job in his place, God heals Job, restores Job's fortunes, lifts Job up. And we need that because sometimes in the world we feel very alone. Sometimes we feel that God might not care about us. But God does. Jesus is the sign of how much God loves you. God has sent his son to save you. Despite your sin, despite all the times you think that you're God, God still saves you by his grace and mercy in Jesus Christ. God sends you the Holy Spirit to create faith in your hearts and guide you in your life. God is there. And you're important to God. Now let me tell you the rest of that story, of that practice. As I'm laying on the ground on my back, hardly realizing that, that I do not really belong there and that I'm also hoping that I can breathe again because he totally knocked the wind out of me. That right guard reached his hand down and helped me up. And he said to me, someday you'll do that. Someday you'll be me. I knew in that moment that he cared at least a little bit, that he didn't destroy me just to destroy me, but he actually cared and was trying to help me. Our Lord picks us up. Our Lord is there to remind us that we are cared for. And though God is God and we are not, and though God is awesome and full of majesty and glory, God takes time every single day to love you, to save you, to have his son die and rise for you. Every day, God is there in Jesus Christ for you. Never forget that promise. Never forget that hope. Never forget that no matter the storms in life or whether you find yourself flat on your back because a right guard hit you so hard you went flying in the air, the Lord is there to lift you up, to love you and save you. For that we can say thanks be to God. Amen. We are a church together and so let us together Confess our shared faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Holy and gracious God, we often find ourselves in storms. We find ourselves in difficult situations, but we know that you are there for us, that you care for us, that you are God and you use your immense power and glory and grace to save us. Help us to know that you're there for us every day and that when we need lifting up, you are there to lift us up. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we give thanks on this Father's Day for fathers and father-like figures and for all they do for others. Bless with them and be with them in the midst of their roles. We also acknowledge, Lord, that who, those who on this day is a difficult one. And we ask that you would give them peace in the midst of their difficulty. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we ask that you would send your grace and healing to all who hurt this day in any way. Lift them up. Remind them that they're not alone. Give them healing and strength for whatever they're going through. And be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear in our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, comfort those who grieve the loss of loved ones. Remind them of the promise of eternal life that comes in your Son, Jesus Christ. And that promise that one day we will see our loved ones in glory. Be with them and walk with them as they walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear in our, our prayer. prayer. And loving God, you have good timing as we're about to pray for rain for our fields and our lawns and our flowers. We ask that you would nurture and be with this creation. We ask that you would uh, help us to care for it and help us to appreciate all the blessings in life you give us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we ask that you would bless our partners in ministry. Be with Luther Park Bible Camp, Lutheran Campus Ministry at Stout, the ELCA, the Northwest Center of Wisconsin, the Churches of Boyceville, American Lutheran Homes, Lutheran Social Services, West Cap and Stepping Stones. We give thanks for our partners in ministry, for all they do to serve those in need and to spread your word to all ages. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And loving God, continue to guide us in this congregation. We give thanks for our members and for all those who participate in our ministry in any way. We give thanks for their financial gifts, which keeps this ministry going. We give thanks for the hours of volunteers that they put in. We ask that you continue to bless us, that we might proclaim your name in word and deed wherever we go. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and also, also with you. you. If you're online, I invite you to share peace through the comments. And here in the parking lot, let's have our God's peace haunt. The ushers will be going around to collect the offering. If you're online and like to give a gift to Trinity, go to the website, trinityvoiceful.com. Scroll down. You'll see the giving form. You can also send offering into the mail at P.O. Box 247. And you can uh, download the Gift Plus app, search for Trinity Lutheran, and donate that way.
everybody. Thank you, everybody. Looks like it. All right, let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now hear the word of the Lord. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come now, the table is set, and our Lord Jesus Christ invites you to receive the gifts of God for you, the people of God. The body of Christ, broken for you. The blood of Christ, poured out for you. At this time, I invite you to take communion, being reminded that it is the body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you. the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace until life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we give thanks for this sacrament. We give thanks that you care for us and love us through your son, Jesus Christ. Be with us as we go out into the world. Be with us in the storms of life, helping us to know that you are there for us every day. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We conclude with day by day.
thank you for joining us for worship tonight, uh, today, in however way that you did. For those that are in the parking lot, please be careful as you exit, making sure that you're checking those back and side mirrors. Let us have our thanks be to God honk. Everyone have a wonderful week, and we'll see you again soon. God bless.